about Instagram though, bro. I feel like I low-key already met you, bro. But yeah. this is like actually our first time meeting, and this isn't the first time I felt like that. The yeah. first time it was actually I was shooting an episode with uh, Nick and Octavius okay. in, uh, in LA, and Octavius goes, "Yo, bro, I haven't seen you since." He's like, damn, bro, I can't remember the last time we linked up. I was like, bro, this is my first time meeting you. Yeah. He's like, yo, what? Yeah. <laughs> and that shit kind of threw both our minds, bro, because, like, this is yeah. just so crazy, man. Well, it makes the world smaller, and it's funny that you say this, because, like, legit, when I was leaving, my girl was like, what are you about to do? And I was like, I got to run some errands. I had to go give a check for, like, a lease back. And then uh, I was like, I'm actually going to shoot a podcast with Jay. And she was like, bro, that's so awesome. I was like, yeah, you want to know the crazy thing? Is like, this is the first time we ever met, because she knows we done did the lives yeah. and, like, other things. But social media just makes the world smaller, right? And we get to connect and show you in the city, so. Thanks, thanks, bro. Well, appreciate you hopping on, bro. I already know I had to hit you up since I was in H-Town, bro. So tell me something, bro. What is it right now that you primarily focused on right now as far as business-wise, bro? Business-wise. So uh, a lot of wholesaling, uh, especially like since Corona happened, um, we've slowed down on the flipping. I know we were just talking about flipping. <laughs> I don't really like flipping, but... Um, <laughs> Right, uh, but you know we've been doing a lot of wholesaling lately, uh, hotels like just re-listing as yeah. if we have a couple of those coming up, and then I'm trying to knock on wood get into the Airbnb space. So nice. We have uh, two of those under contract right now, uh, praying that we get clear title. Um, so I mean, my whole goal is just wholesaling and building long-term wealth and then taking that money to start other businesses right now. Not for sure, but what about the trucking thing? I know you at least talked about the trucking thing for a little Yeah, bit. so the trucking thing, man, I was literally at the finish line. We were about to buy a truck and uh, the lady back, as sellers do, bro, uh, <laughs> sellers do. she changed the terms on me uh, the week before we were supposed to finalize everything. And uh, that deal specifically fell through, but I already have everything set up. It's just at the time, too, my wife was about to have a baby in like yeah. three weeks, so it kind of uh, dispersed things, but I'm still on track to at least by summer make sure to get one to maybe two trucks going. That's what's up, that's what's up, bro. Yeah, sellers last minute, they always want to hit you with that one on the draw two code. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, we said 20 on it? Yeah, she had like a daughter that we had never met come in the picture, and then she just changed up the whole deal because the lady was going to own her finances, so I didn't have a lot of money coming out, and then she said she wanted cash, and I was like, I'm not willing to pay it. And then I didn't like how, you know what I mean? It's how like, she tried to do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just don't try to force shit, man. Like, if it's not meant to be, then it's not meant to be, you know? Nah, for sure. I actually fucking, uh, I just bought my trucks and stuff in Atlanta. Nice. And um, it was kind of the same thing, bro. I had tried to buy them before, and just too many things came up. And I was like, all right, whatever. This time, literally, like, the stars aligned, and it just had it perfectly. I had just, I had just opened it up in Atlanta. Just moved out of Tampa. My partner from Denmark was like, yo, I wired the whole cash for all three trucks. Oh, nice. I was like, oh, <laughs> you can't, yeah. co- can't complain about that. And literally, it all happened so smooth, bro, that it's like, it almost had to happen, bro. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I agree, man. And I think that's the right transition. I think the joy of real estate is it gives us money to focus on those other businesses. And doing stuff like this, I really like creating content and uh, showing people how to get into business. Facts, bro. That's why I fuck with you, bro. I know um, we met through Instagram, bro. Just because yeah. of, of <laughs> literally, just because of content, bro. Like I think I seen you post something. I'm like, oh, that's fire, and vice versa, bro. So let, let me ask you something, bro. I know you're not from Houston originally. Yeah. You say you're from Tennessee. Tennessee. Yeah. Did you start your real estate journey out there, or was it when you moved out here? Uh, no, not at all, man. It was when I moved here. So uh, quick backstory: what brought me here was. Uh, my dad lived in Houston, so I used to visit growing up, but um, when I was in high school, he actually worked for this wealthy individual. Uh, it was the first time I was like in a penthouse and all yeah. this, and uh, it was the first time I heard you didn't have to go to college to be successful, so that shit just kind of blew my mind. I was 17 at okay. the time, but when that happened, it was a very pivotal point in my life because after that happened, I was like, I gotta move here because like, I just had never heard people think like that. Um, and you can't, you know what I'm saying, when you're in a penthouse and you got watches on the table that are worth more than your mom's house, it's kind of hard to argue with these people. Yeah. Them <laughs> well, you know what I'm saying? So, uh, yeah, that brought me to Houston. I was going to college and then I got sucked into doing a seminar. I found out about wholesaling and, uh, which is, bro, the amount, they were charging like 50 grand and I tried to do it. Luckily I got turned down, but, uh, got into wholesaling and then just been really doing real estate full time for about four and a half years. What uh, what seminar was it? It was a rich dad seminar, bro. Okay. 
Yeah. And they, got me. they get you with the free event, and they hit yeah, you with the like weekend, that. and then you know, uh, and it, it, you know, it, it served its purpose, right? When I, it was just like when I heard whole selling, bro, I was like, there's no way in hell this is legal, bro. Like there's no way. It was one another one of those game changing moments for me. It's funny, bro, because literally, um, I was talking to Brian about it on on, on the, when I shot an episode with him yesterday, and um, you know Austin Rutherford. And, yeah, uh, from yeah. Ohio, yeah. and then the week prior, I was talking to him, him about it, and it's crazy. You're the third person that mentions it. How they, a lot of people aren't like don't realize how lucky they are oh, yeah. that they have a lot of regular people making money actually putting up content for free, bro. Because before it was like they were like gatekeepers in the in the industry, bro. Oh, 100. And like you were only teaching something if you were on TV. And you, if you wanted to learn something from them, there was no like Instagram content. It was no, you're, you're coming to this fucking uh, hotel room. You're coming to one of those ballrooms in the hotel. You're going to get a whole bunch of free information that gets you excited. And then you're going to pay $1,000 for a two-day class. And after that two-day class, you're going to pay anywhere from thirty dollars to $50,000 to learn from them. That's what we were like. And that's how it was. It wasn't, that wasn't only just one company. That was like a whole... Yeah, there was multiple companies doing it that way, and those were the only people really putting out content and advertising. Oh yeah. So like, people right now don't realize how lucky they are. You can just go on Instagram and actually be able to talk to somebody that you want to learn from, because you don't even you don't even like when we used to pay or, or get pitched those things, we were never even going to be able to talk to the person. Oh no, that's the crazy thing, man. Is a couple things about that event that really stood out to me and does to this day that kind of sits in the back of my mind is that about 10 people signed up for the 50 bands. Like they were ready to go. Like I said, I was one of them and then found out like, hey, you got good credit, but we ain't willing to take that risk. But I view that as a blessing because like you said, back then it was like you had Sean Terry. And I think what's dope about what we do is that people can relate. And I feel like if people can relate, they'll take action and you know what I'm saying? feel like it's possible, right? Because people might mess with my style, people might mess with your style, right? Um, but that's the joy of it is like we still give so much free game and people don't realize back in the day it was like you go to those seminars or you listen to Sean Terry. And Sean Terry, I've never met him, he's a GOAT, but my thing is it's hard for me to relate with a 50 year old white guy. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. Like it just, it is what it is. So like those things just kind of sit in the back of my head because I don't think people realize how, you know, there wasn't the Max Maxwell's, the Jay Monopolies, the Flipping a House or Byron or Brian or any of these people, so it's like we're real people. Yeah, but it's also made it bad too because people, when there's a right, we're in this information age where technology and information is so prevalent that people get stuck, right? Because right. they see all this information, they don't know what to believe. Because we teach and how we do business is going to be different. Yeah, exactly. And that's the joy, though, too, of this business is you got to figure out what works for you, your lifestyle, where you're at in life. Like we was just talking about, right? Like you and your girl, like y'all don't have kids or responsibilities and certain things. I live like a dad, right? Yeah. But we can still do business, make money, and live life how we want. And I think just having that relatability makes it easier for people to, uh, you know, get started and understand it better, right? One hundred percent, bro. And it's funny. I was actually just, I literally was uh, was just telling that to Brian yesterday. Not on camera. I don't think we got it on camera. But it was, uh, I didn't realize, like, I didn't really feel like I could do it. So the way I got started, bro, I paid for it. I, um, I wasn't as lucky as you, bro. I actually did pay for one of those mentorship things, bro. Gotcha. Um, from somebody, it obviously worked out, though, right? <laughs> hey. <laughs> I, I paid, like, 40 grand, bro. Gotcha. I went 20, 20 with a partner, so I wasn't a sucker by myself. And um, we ended up paying 40 grand to somebody. It was actually out here from Texas, bro, from San Antonio. Gotcha. And, uh, it was like one of those big CV seminars, bro. And I go, I end up having to go to an event for three days, and that was it. Yeah, and it was an event for three days, and then a Facebook group, and that was it. That's it. But you know, entrepreneurs, right? We get paid for solving problems. So uh, three months later, bro, we ended up getting our first fix and flip, which is crazy. But it's like I didn't really like. I even though I had that information to do it, I wasn't really able to the guy. He was like some big TV star. Gotcha. I like it. It's almost like, damn, I know I paid, but this still feels a little fake. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it was definitely. And they, they hit you with the sharp closers, and you know, and I think I, I've heard the best you, closers. Bro, I would love to meet them <laughs> now. Like, you know what I'm saying? I would also like to see where the other people are, but like you said, it was just like 
the all, even because I look at the mentorship, what they were offering, it was like they came, they sent somebody into town for one day and they would go talk to like small banks with you, which I don't even really use, like I do use small banks, but not, like that's not what I need in my business. business. Like I need to like a pivotal point. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like anybody can go in a small bank and try to talk to them, but also it's like if you need something, you can hit an email. And it's like, bro, you know what, what we do. Like my, my partner just bought a rental last week because when he called the guy, the guy was like, I'm actually at the house. Could you come now? Yeah, it should happen like this. But if you got an email, a nigga, you know what I'm saying? What's going to happen in, in a day? Like somebody's going to come in and knows what they're doing and they're going to get that deal, which is what we did. But, you know, at the time when you're so new and you learn about this, like I said, I was programmed, go to school, get a degree, get a good job and retire. Yeah. And I always knew I wanted to get into real estate. But when you hear something like wholesaling or how you can do it, you know what I mean? Like it, it, it changed how I think. So, so walk us through your journey, bro. So you go to this rich dad, poor dad. Luckily, you yeah. couldn't pay. <laughs> what, yeah. what, what happened? I still spent money, though. I did, bro. I you, did the two, you did the two-day. Yeah, well, I, <laughs> so I was already at the two-day. Oh. I was already at the end of the, the sales funnel. What I did pay for, <laughs> I bought some bull, like, some, not, like, I didn't need it. Uh, software to run comps and like assess value and stuff but when you're new you don't know and uh so yeah my girl had just got her tax return we spent twenty four hundred dollars that i knew i had to get back to her so after that i uh i was still working on my associate's degree i finished that and then i was like i'm gonna take two years that i was gonna take to get my bachelor's i was like i'm gonna do real estate for two years and just see how it goes uh, but then for eight months, bro, I was just in paralysis analysis. Like, you know what I'm saying? You get yeah, jazzed up, you figure out about bigger pockets. You just, I'm killing it, <laughs> but you're really not, not doing anything. You're just, and I did that for eight months. And like, there was one day my girl was just mad, bro. And she was not feeling it. She was like, look, straight up, like you need to take action or shut the fuck up about real estate. But <laughs> I don't care which one you do. But do one. Yeah, one of them. yeah, but that was actually what I needed, and I, I sent out letters, and I got this lady, probably the most motivated person I've ever had, and um, I went on the appointment, low ball, like she was like, I like you, and I want to sell you the house, but like there's no way, like I could probably pay sixty, seventy grand, I offered her twenty, but I didn't know what I was doing. <laughs> And this is in like Katy, like I told you, I live in a really good, good school district. So yeah, like, Katy's was, hard, I heard. I would love hard. to have that house now, but my point is I took action and then um, that was at the end of, I think it was like 2015. And then January 2016, I was like, if I'm going to do this and put in action every day, like I'm going to do it 100%. And so January 2016, I when I committed everything, I was still working. Any free time, that's what I was doing was real estate. And then it took me about six months to get my first deal. Wow. Yeah. How, how big was your first deal? Oh, uh, we made eight grand. So, and I split it with my mentor, so I made four. Yeah, I didn't check though. Yeah, bro. Literally. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, like, I was waiting tables, I was making like that a month. So, I mean, to be able to do that. And for me, it was just proof of concept, of course. Right? Like when you get that money in your hand, like, cause I had been going, I had looked at 20, 30 houses, like going to appointments. I just wasn't getting anything. Um, so yeah, like when I got that check, bro, you couldn't have told me nothing. <laughs> and it, was my, it was my birthday when I found out that we, we locked up the deal and my, my mentor sold it. I remember being at the gym, the phone call, everything. So it's like yeah, crazy. It's, it's crazy, bro. Like we, it, it, it's important to remember those feelings, bro. I be remembering that. Since. I was say, like, what was your first check? like? My first check wasn't that exciting. I'm not gonna lie, bro. My first check, I felt like I was cheating. For real? Yeah, it really did. It was crazy. I, um, I had paid for the mentorship shit, and I'm on Facebook. Um, I'm on Facebook, and uh, I had paid for this basically really expensive Facebook group. <laughs> yeah. Like, at the end of the day, yeah. Yeah, so it's 3 in the morning, and I'm just scrolling. I'm like, and mind you, I, I didn't even know about wholesaling at this point, but this yeah. is 2017, bro. I still didn't know about wholesaling, dog. I, I was all a, I was a just flipping. I thought flipping was where you made money. Yeah. That's that's what they sold me on. You know what I'm saying? They're like, yo, yeah, yeah. wholesale is cool, but do you want to make the, the small check or the big check? Yeah, yeah. You know, capping. So I was like, damn, like I need to figure something out, bro. I thought like, paid for this shit, and it's crazy. It's almost like you know, I don't believe in coincidence. You know, going back to all sorts of prophecy that I was talking about. So I'm uh, I'm, I'm scrolling through Facebook and I see this dude. And he was selling a property in Detroit. Purchase price 30K. Uh, purchase price 30K, rehab 25, ARV 110. And I'm like, 
I could pay this shit in cash, not cash, but I have credit cards. I can make it happen. It's, yeah. it's doable. Yeah, so I'm like, this is doable. So I'm like, yo, bro, I need this property. He goes, yeah, um, did you live in Detroit? I'm like, nah. <laughs> he goes, how do you want to do this? I'm like, I don't know, bro. You got this deal you want to sell? I got this deal I want to buy. Yeah. Let's figure something out. So he's like, yo, uh, just pay me 5K for project management. I was like, okay. So I gave him 5K for project management, bro. And said and done, bro. I didn't have any, I didn't do a single thing with that deal, bro. I get a weekly update. I send a weekly update to the, to the, um, to like the lenders. And they'll just write the shit over. And uh, so three months later, I get a $35,000 check, bro. And it felt like I cheated, bro. Gotcha, like, yeah. And literally, because I didn't do anything. experience yeah. like that for the, all the stuff we were talking about while we down life living. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I didn't experience any of it. So it didn't really feel real, bro. But I will tell you my aha moment where I felt like uh, I had already been making money before I left the, before I got out of the military. I had already set myself up so that I wouldn't be struggling. Yeah. Of course, entrepreneurs, you know. Yeah, you get your charger and just check yeah. out. <laughs> yeah. so, so it was, um, I had just got out. I think I was out for a month. And I was in Detroit, actually, uh, checking some properties for the content of my properties and stuff. And I ended up going to the strip club called Legends, and I get pissed drunk, bro. Yeah. So I go back to the hotel, wake up the next morning, and I'm like, you know when you wake up, like, it's done. Yeah. And I had to make it to the airport. So I'm like, oh shit, I'm like rushing to pack, bro, like panicking, bro, like, oh, I gotta make it to the airport. And then as I'm walking towards the hotel lobby, I'm like, no the fuck I don't gotta make it to the airport. I don't got nowhere to be right now. Yeah. So I go to the lady, extend another day <laughs> just so I can sleep in. And then I call my girl and I'm like, she was living in New York at the time. And I'm like, yo, baby, I'm coming to New York. And she's like, when? I'm like, later today. Yeah. And she's like, how come? I'm like, just cause. And yo, I remember being on that plane, giddy as hell, like, yo, like this is, this is it, yeah. you know? Because I didn't, um, the thing is, I didn't have a job. The, the, the military was my first job I really ever had, you know? You were in the military right after school? Yeah, yeah. I was like 17 years old, bro. Yeah. And um, I had like one waiter job, two yeah, months, yeah, two yeah. women, whatever. And it wasn't really a job, a long-term job. So like, that being my first job, and also being a job that you can't just quit from. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was crazy for me for when I was finally free. So that was like my aha moment. Kind of like, it wasn't a check, but it was like the freedom. Yeah, yeah the freedom, right? Because I, I think that's why we all do it, right? The fact that I can come down here and kick it with you. We can do this. Um, if my girl needs something, she's good. Kid's good. If we want to travel, obviously with Corona, it's a little warm, <laughs> a little crappy right now. But I, I think that's why we're all doing it is the freedom, man. For me, I just never, I never even had this big of a bit of, bit of a vision for my life. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Because where I'm from, man, it's like 10,000 people. Like, you either work at Walmart or you work at a factory. That's so right. everything I've done to this point, I'm already light years ahead. Everything else is extra, bro. So it's like, for me, I'm just simple. I know what I want and I, I still have big goals, but it's like, I'm already, I'm already light years ahead of anything that I envision for my life. So everything else is extra. So it's like meeting people like you, meeting people like Ryan, you know what I'm saying? My circle of friends right now, like before, I'm sure you know how it is, like people who get out of the army and stuff, they're probably broke, but I bet you can call half of them and ask to borrow a hundred dollars. <laughs> it's like, I could call people that I haven't talked to in months and they would give me a thousand and not even think about it, you know what I mean? And it's like having a moment of reflection, like how did I get to this point? And it's a lot of hard work, sacrifices, crying, you know what I'm saying, struggling, but it is possible, and that's that's the point. It's just, you gotta make yourself uncomfortable. I like something that you said right now that actually, I was talking to my boy Kenny about it from Vegas. Like, you know Kenny? Yeah, Vegas? yeah, shout out to Kenny. Yeah, bro. shout out to Kenny. When we went to Vegas uh, last year, my girl, when she had a job, they do conferences, and uh, I linked up with Kenny. We only got to chill for a couple of hours. My I, haven't met, I haven't met him in person yet. Yeah, I, I, yeah. <laughs> I haven't met, but we've been talking since like 2017, yeah, bro. People. He's one of the first people I ever followed when, I, when I started flipping, bro. Yeah, he's been on social media, bro. Yeah, bro. He's one of the first people I ever started. And even like, bro, you've been you like an OG in the game low-key for, for like, at, at least for me, bro. Because a lot of people, I only started in 2017, bro. Gotcha. And I didn't start posting. I made money since 2017 and 2018, but I didn't start actually posting stuff. So like, the middle of 2018. Gotcha. So a lot of people were like, who the fuck is this guy? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I've, yeah I've been posting for a while. 
Yeah, and I don't even remember how I follow you. Probably through Kenny or somebody like posted you, but I watch people, bro, because that's the thing with social media is, I would say people get caught in the hype, right? And yeah. you start getting around people and you can tell who's got it and who isn't and who's fronting too, right? right? Like we talk about. And you always seem very genuine, like you yourself, bro. Like I just get New York vibes. Like, <laughs> I want to chop cheese. I know you about your money. You know what I'm saying? But that's authentic. And I think a lot of people gravitate towards me and my partner as well, because like you seen, like you seen what I pulled up in, bro. Like yeah. I'm wearing a Bass Pro four dollar hat. Like I'm Bass just Pro. simple, right? Yeah. But I'm still about my money. But those things aren't as exciting for me of as course. for you. You're a little bit more flashy, but that's you, right? Like yeah. you're authentically yourself. And I don't care who it is, like if you're authentic, I fucks with you, like 100%. And like with you, that's always the vibe with Kenny. I see what he does, I see yeah, the vibe with Kenny. Like, you know what I mean? There's certain people, so I think when you meet those people, like that's what I gravitate towards. Like you said, bro, we've been talking for years. Right. We just met today. Right. And like, you know what I'm saying? Like that's crazy, but that's the joy, that's the good of social media. Yeah, not nah, and um. So the the reason I mentioned Kenny is because something you said, bro. When it comes to having a power circle and, and really strong people around you, is this? It's um. Kenny had this quote that he had he had told me one time, and it was like, I could be dead broke. I don't know if you're saying I could I could be dead I could be dead broke right now and still buy a, a million dollar property because of the relationships that I have built. And you know that's the, that's huge, bro. Like you said, bro. How many are the people around you right now? People who can just give you a thousand, two thousand. You yeah. need it. Also, <laughs> think of yeah, most most people circle, bro. They want, and it doesn't have to be about money, right? Like, if you need, if you shop somebody, you need somewhere to stay, or you know, what I'm saying <laughs> whatever you're into, I would say loyalty and and those relationships. And it's another quote because I've heard him say that it talks about like basically like I want to be around people that's gonna put me on when I'm not even in the room. Right, I feel like you're one of those people. I would do the same. Like anytime that I see somebody where it's like, hey, I don't even know them, but I feel like I could add value to them. Why wouldn't I? Right? Yeah. It's not like I'm just don't. You know what I mean? I have things to do in my day, but it takes maybe two seconds to be like, hey, I'm not in Detroit or wherever, but I know my man Jay. He probably got some connections, or exactly. and maybe that turns into something big for you. But you know what I'm saying? Like most people's relationships in their life are so fake and like. They cling to them, and I'm like, this person doesn't add value. And if somebody doesn't add value to your life, they're taken. There's no, there's no in between. And like relationships is just critical, bro. Like you said, I could go broke tomorrow and make a couple calls and a few and days, good. and we'd be good, <laughs> and bro. bro <laughs> it, it's crazy to think about it like that, but but it's so fact. It's so true, bro. It's like there was one. I remember when I first started being an entrepreneur, bro. Like when I first really was like, nah, this is really it for me. I started going shaking hands, really putting like things forward for my business. It was, um, I remember I heard this dude, he posted a video, I don't even remember who it was, bro. Um, this was like 2017. And he said that if all the money in the world was distributed equally, it's probably still like within a few years, it back, it, it end back up in the hands of the people who originally had it. And like, that shit always blows my mind because that's fact, bro. Look, unemployment. Unemployment been hitting for, for sort of stupid right now for a lot of people, bro, right? right? And those people are still broke, bro. Yeah, and it's, it's <laughs> the job been calling them back. You know what I'm saying? Like, and, and that's, bro, I think this, I'm so happy you brought that up, though, because this year right here, and I, I'm sure you felt it too, it's going to be the setup, bro, for you to either be broke next year, because we ain't even really felt the effects of Corona. Like, we felt the effects like you can't go to the bar. Well, I'm talking about, like you said, money distribution, people losing their houses. People buying a lot of stuff, like money getting transferred. We haven't felt that yet. Yeah. And so, like, and it's, getting, and it's coming. It's coming, right? But my point is, like, if you didn't figure it out, because, like, for me, bro, Corona was one of the, and I'm sure you probably feel the same, was one of the best things that ever happened to me. 100%. I got to spend four months with my family, not doing <laughs> anything, bro. And it spoiled me to where, like, I was like, man, you gotta quit your job. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I realized, like, I need you to just be home. We need the family unit. But also it's like looking long term, right? Like I need to be doing other things to set myself up, not just real estate. What can I do more with my personal brand? What can I do with the trucking? Yeah. That's why I started really, I have been talking about the trucking. My, like both my parents were truck drivers, so I always was fascinated with it, but I was like, fuck being a trucker, bro. <laughs> I'm trying to own it. Like I'm just lazy, bro. I'm not trying to be in a truck, but this year made me really like hone in like, 
let's stop capping. Let's be, let's be about it. Like, like, so I went out, found a deal. It didn't work out. Well, cool. I took the steps. I know what to do now. Now I just need to get the truck. Started looking at my personal brand. How can we make money? Like opening up other revenue sources. And so like, it just really gave me time to really like focus where I'm like 2021, bro. Like I'm out to yeah, like, now, rock. I'm, I'm excited, bro. I'm excited for 2021, bro. And I think one of like, most people don't realize this until like until it hits you one day is that like sometimes we I'm, I'm i wholeheartedly believe that we already know the answers to what we really need to do you know? oh yeah but sometimes there's so much outer noise that we can't hear the inner voice telling us what to do and i think coronavirus if not if it did nothing else it at least let us listen to our inner voice a little bit right so whether whether or not people took action on it is up to them but i know i was able to tune out a lot of noise bro because i wasn't out the clubs, I was, yeah, I was, yeah. I was, yeah, I was yeah. at home reading and meditating, bro. <laughs> yeah. It created stillness, right? Exactly. Like, like my father that. talks about, like, we need that, especially now more than ever, where, like you said, social media is so prevalent. Like, people don't even have relations, like, people don't even just talk to their spouse or their kids or, like, you know what I'm saying? And I've been good at that, but being in Corona and being in the house with them made me realize, like, I need to even, I can, I can, there's areas that I can do better. And like you said, like, you're going to come out of this better or worse, bro. And it's literally no excuse because at least for two months, you made more money than you ever made. Yeah. And, and your living situation didn't change. So, like, if you didn't at least put back, like, three to five just to have, bro, like, for an opportunity, like, you, it, you're probably never going to get it, bro. Because you got to take that reflection of yourself. And I try to do that even every day, like, just trying to get better. It doesn't have to be... You know, miles, it, it could be a couple steps, but just trying to get better, like thinking of things a new way, learning how to make money, connecting with people like you, you know what I'm right. saying? Like, we can learn from each other. Right, bro. Speaking of learning from each other, bro, I got a question for you, bro. Mm -hmm. How long have you been growing your beard out for, bro? Gotcha. Yeah. <laughs> this is like two, two and a half years. Two and a half years straight? Yeah, yeah. Like you trim it though, right? Yeah, yeah, I trim it. My girl does hair, so like, she keep me looking, looking straight. I need to get it uh, trimmed up right now, but. Yeah, bro, we've been in the game for Yeah, I was trying to grow my shit out, bro. My shit was looking like Will's. We had yeah, the camera. Yeah. I yeah, saw I you know Will and Brandon, Brandon, bro, coming for me, bro. <laughs> I seen it in the comments, bro. <laughs> <laughs> nah, I was, uh, I, was, I, I was letting it grow, bro. My shit was the longest it's ever been uh, during the corona. During yeah. corona. And I was like, yo, hey, fuck it, why not? And then um, I had four occasions back to back to back to back. Where I had four different people ask me if I was Arabic, bro. Oh, for real, gotcha. And I'm like, hey, yo, no offense, but I just, yeah. I'm like, nah, I'm, yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm yeah. Hispanic. <laughs> I'm Hispanic, right? Let me shave this shit down a little bit. Yeah. And now, now I don't know if I want to grow it again. <laughs> it's just me. I would look like a fat 12 year old without it, so I need it. To yeah, I'd be, I'd be curious to see what he looked like without it. Right? <laughs> It's not a pretty sight, bro. But we gotta put a challenge together right now. What 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 the, what needs to happen if you get to cut it? Oh, uh, nothing, bro. <laughs> it's not gonna happen. Bro. Nothing? Yeah, for nothing? Bro. Nah, it's not. Cause, bro, like, I had dreads forever, so I had dreads for, like, six years. That one was a hard one for me to let go. Dreads? Yeah. I can't even figure that out. Bro, yeah, I might have to see some pictures, bro. Nice. But uh, when I let them go, I'm like, I gotta get something else, bro. So the beard was it. I had, I had braids. Oh, for real? I had long hair. You had the Omarion specials? Yeah, no <laughs> cash. <laughs> when I was back like, in New York, bro, my hair was long. Like, it would come down to my shoulders and shit. Oh, yeah. Man, people didn't even realize that. So one of, the, one of the things I like, bro, is that I, I have a lot of people who come on this on the, on, on the show, and they actually give people some actionable steps, you know, which I think is important. And I know that's something you really love doing on your, on your Instagram, bro. So what are some actionable steps you would give to somebody who's like, why? this right now as far as real estate goes real estate I, i'm gonna start with life and then we'll get into real estate because it all ties in but i think number one especially if you're younger but it doesn't matter age is you need to change your environment that's that's step one if you're with people who like even if they say something and you're like i don't agree with that don't and don't get me wrong difference of opinion is good but if they're in your financial bracket I don't, I don't think you should be yeah. around them, all right? And not to say that everybody around me is wealthy. I would say it's definitely changed. Like, it used to be 80% broke, 20% wealthy. Now it's flip-flop, right? And I've been very intentional in that. So I would say environment is number one. Uh, number two, education. Whether it's real estate or you just want to do better in your life, you need to study people that do better. It's like an old Jim Rohn quote that says, and I just posted today about 
learn what poor people do and don't do that, right? So it's like same. You want to know, down. right? You want to know what wealthy people do? Write that down, bro. Study that, and you know, like that's number two. But especially in real estate, you can study. There's a million things to do, but then you need to get specific on what you want. So if it's wholesaling, focus on wholesaling until you knock a couple of deals down. We did, you know, I wholesaled for two straight years before I even looked at flipping a house. Um, so like, yeah, if, Instagram, man. right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. And I'm, I'm, you know what I'm saying? That's me. I'm just being real because I never had an interest of flipping. It was just we were getting these great deals, and a mentor was like, "Why not?" You know what I'm saying? Do more or make more money. Um, so I would say get specific on what it is that you want, whether it's wholesaling, flipping, or buying rentals. And then the next step is like, once you've closed that gap of not knowing anything to knowing enough, you gotta, which is the most important part, is take action or leap. Um, and an analogy I heard is like a ship dock, like coming to a dock. When a ship is docked, it's close enough that if you jumped off of that ship, you might make it, you might not. But if you don't, you're not gonna drown. Yeah. And so if you close that gap and take action, then you you and don't give up, that would be the last thing. It's like, be consistent and don't give up because if you do all those things together, you better your environment, you study, uh, you figure out what it is you wanna do, and then you take action, and then you don't give up on that action. There's no way you can fail at anything, really. Like, whatever it is you wanted to do. Well, I think those, that would probably be the big things. Nah, that's, that's huge, bro. And I like something you said that a lot of people don't realize that, I don't know if you could relate to this, but I know for me, most of the, how would I say, most of the biggest like financial breakthroughs didn't come from gaining more, more of business knowledge. It came more from like learning more self knowledge or like more oh, yeah. like. So it's crazy you said that you like I want to start off with life and then it ties into business. Mm -hmm. A lot of people don't realize, bro. Like me, I, I wholeheartedly believe that. Like most of my biggest breakthroughs came after I learned something about myself, like so, oh, yeah. some self limiting belief that was stopping me. Mm -hmm. right, I don't think there's, because even in your business, bro, I'm sure there's, we're, we're students always, right? You still learn more things about your business that you can implement. But it's like, there's no one thing where you're like, damn, this is going to change my entire yeah, yeah, yeah. It's small tweaks. It's, yeah. It's small tweaks. But there is, there is things in your, in your life that you, do you do have that feeling where you're like, yo, I have been looking at this completely wrong. Yeah, yeah. And it, the thing is, like, the crazy thing about life is you can hear the same thing for years, right? Uh, like my girl always gets mad because she says, I've been telling you that, and then my homie's like, hey, you should check this out. I'm like, hey, man, you thought about this? <laughs> and she like hit me, right? But my point being is like, you can you can hear the same message for years, but that last little like centimeter where it needs to click, it, you know what I'm saying? It could take years for that one, and then once it does, like you're like, oh, that makes sense. And it's not gonna be overwhelming, it's just like, I've never thought of it like this, right? right? Uh, it could be hearing it different or hearing it from a different person. But the point is, like, be willing to take that in and then marinate with that. Let that thought sit. And how can that affect every other area of your life, not just business as well? But not only, not, I think you said something that is interesting. You said not only hearing it different or hearing it different from a different person. Those two things, yeah, are factors. But I think the biggest factor, the third one, is being a person who's ready to receive that information. Sometimes we hear it, we 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 haven't developed ourselves enough so that that information is actually important to yes. us. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh, I agree, bro. Real estate. When I got started, it's funny the way I got started. I read this book, the uh, real estate book, but it had I didn't understand nothing, bro. I wasn't a person who, who couldn't even, I couldn't even comprehend what was in that book. And it took for my my partner to call me after I read that book and say, "Yo, bro, let's do real estate." To be like, "All right, man." Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. No, it's, I, no, I agree for sure. Like I said, I've always thought about doing real estate. It was always going to be in my journey, but I never, like, I was so gung-ho on, like, working a corporate job, and that was the only route that it took from a random stranger to tell me, like, you know, you don't have to go to college to be successful for me to be like, oh, snap, like, I've never even thought of it like that. Like, you don't? Like, you know <laughs> what I mean? Like, you don't? Um... So it's like you said, but you have to be ready to uh, receive that knowledge. Because I have like you know some younger friends and stuff that I try to just look out for, put on game. But some of the times it's like the stuff that I'm saying, even though it's simple, it's over their head. Or like you said, they're just not ready to receive 
what you're hearing, right? Like I have one of my homies, he just moved here from Tennessee. We grew up together. And I've been telling him for years, bro, there's no way you can be around me and not be successful, bro. Like, I'll motivate a turtle, bro. Like, it, you know what I'm saying? Like, because I've just been given so much opportunity, I know what is possible. And finally, I've been, I've been since I moved here, I've been here eight years. Since I moved here, for at least six of those years, I've been trying to get him to move. And it wasn't until he was at this perfect point in his life and with Corona and his job. And I'm like, dog, I'm going to be real with you. You haven't been doing anything since high school that's different. And like, you know what I'm saying? But he was willing because he was at that that mindset yes. to accept that information and he moved here, bro. Literally, literally, uh, same thing happened with my brother, bro. My older That's brother. Cool. Yeah, it's funny, on Instagram, I call him my little bro because he showed it to me. Yeah. Everybody, so everybody actually believes that's my little brother now. He's actually my older brother. And um, he actually uh, was ready to move this year. Same thing, coronavirus, lost the job, the whole nine. And he was it, it, same thing bro when i first started the business i, I told him yo i got a four bedroom uh, four bedroom crib out here in, in california bro come come live rent free nah i don't know i don't know what would i do for work out there i'm like yo come let's bro, you live together, together. Yeah. yeah it's a no-brainer for you but for him yeah bro. he wasn't he wasn't ready like bro i can give you the i can give you the best workout plan right now mm -hmm. right like the, the secret sauce workout plan and, but until you ready to actually start working out, it don't matter what kind of information you get. I agree, bro. I agree. Bro, let me ask you, let me ask you a question. I don't wanna hold you up here too long. I got one I want I got one question I really wanna know, bro. This is a deep question, bro. Go say you gotta answer it if you don't want to. Uh, yeah, I'm on the book. How'd you come up with the name flipping the house on Instagram? <laughs> bro, you know, so it's a funny story, right? So uh, I always went by my name and before I was even doing real estate. What happened was, bro, uh, shout out to Max Maxwell. He came to Houston in 2017 or 18. Yeah. I think it was 17 because he was promoting his event for 18. And, bro, I was salty. Like, because I went to this pop up event and my man had hundreds of people. And I'm like, bro, I've never even heard of you. And you got all these people in my city showing up. And then all the questions he answered, asked. Um, you know what I'm saying? We're super easy questions. So I was like, I can do this. So I was like, I want to really start building my Instagram following. And um, I changed my name. I was trying to do something with flipping houses because everybody does, you know what I'm saying? Real estate this, real estate yeah, yeah. that. And I, I didn't want to do that, bro. I'm always trying to be different. And uh, so I did flipping Houston and then I tried like flipping the H. And I was That's like, bro, this, I was like, uh, this is about to kill him, bro. Like, this is original. No, <laughs> One day my homie was like, bro, flipping the H, bro, like, it sounds like you're trying to, like, talk about, like, flipping heroin, bro. And I'm like, whoa, wait, what? And so, like, <laughs> bro, I, but it's, that's why you need people with opinion, right, around you, because it was like, I never even thought of it that one way. Like, and I was like, oh, hell no, bro. So I had to change it, and then that night I was just playing with names, and I was like, let me just try this one and see. And like nobody had it, bro. And I was like, there's no way. And I looked, I checked, like, you know what I'm saying, the copyright. So like, I don't know, all that shit, bro. Because I was like, there's no way. But that's really like funny story, but that's really how it happened. That's hilarious, bro. <laughs> like, what was the Instagram name before that? Uh, I, I think it was just my last name, which is like Acuff. And like, but nobody, I wasn't really pushing real estate. Like, I was really, I really didn't even use social media. Like, yeah, no, yeah, yeah. well, I would say I was a consumer, not a producer, yeah. right? Uh, we get stuck in this, like, eat, no matter what you're doing in life, you always have value to add and you should be producing more than you're consuming. Right. And I was doing a lot of consuming, you know what I'm saying? Liking the pictures and, you know what I mean? Just doing stuff that I didn't need to be doing, whereas, like, now I use it as a networking tool to meet people like yourself. and grow my business and bring in JV deals and uh, make more money, you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't know what the future holds. I know it's not gonna slow down though, you right. know what I mean? So, no way. I'm just like seeing what the way, where the way it takes me, but regardless, like, you know what I'm saying? It will always be part of my identity, even though other businesses, I'll always be in real estate. I might not always wholesale, but I'll always be putting money into real estate, but yeah. flipping a house, I don't know. I'm just gonna keep growing in. So you got your guys now. Yeah, Everybody yeah. know it now. I gotta get a tattoo or something. <laughs> I'm gonna get a Monopoly tattoo. Right? right? I'm yeah. thinking about getting a whole bunch of little Monopoly pieces up my arm. Like, like six nine. Yeah, yeah, you, six, you, nine can get, you can get a rich one, bro, with the Monopoly pieces, like, for sure. I got a... Damn, I don't got it. My girl wearing it right now. I got a Monopoly. I got a. I got my logo, the Monopoly man. Yeah, I love it, bro. 
I'm gonna get a bigger one though, just yeah. branding. That's all that, bro, we all have personal brands, right? With social media, like, we're all a brand every day. It's right. just what we put out. And for me, I like to put out, like, abundance mentality and real estate. And, you know what I'm saying? There's some other stuff mixed in, because that's just my personality. I just, this is who I am. If you fuck with it, cool. If you don't, cool. cool. Either way, <laughs> like, I still make money regardless, so it don't really matter. Nah, facts, facts. Bro, for everybody tuning in, man, you got any, uh, I mean, what? Where can they find you, bro? Instagram, Facebook? Yeah, yeah, so TikTok's booming right now. I like TikTok. Uh, it's not just people dancing. Like, I've actually learned a lot of stuff on TikTok, bro, just uh, based off of, like, internet and social media. But TikTok, Instagram, YouTube, everything is uh, flipping a house, one word. He's flipping a house on everything? Yeah, on Love everything. It. And, uh, we have a Facebook group, too, where we just... It's uh, probably what you paid 40 grand for, but we, we, we legit just give out free information. We do weekly lives, uh, like I'm doing one tonight with my business partner. I'm gonna have you on, um, you know what I'm saying? Just trying to teach people real estate, man. And if you with it, you with it. If you're not, you're not. But either way, you need to be doing something to better your life, bro. It doesn't have to be real estate, but something. Corona should have gave you time to figure that out. Yeah, <laughs> right? You have plenty of time. You have plenty of time. We don't want to hear it no more. You're right? Yeah, like there's no time, bro. Like 2020 was the year. Hell yeah, hell yeah. Well, my brother, I appreciate you hopping on, man. Absolutely, bro. Let's get it.